Hello. Today I'm talking about music. I'm not a music reviewer. I don't have a ton of music theory knowledge, but I love listening to many different types of music, and I love sharing music that I've enjoyed with other people. So why not give it a shot here during Listery Month? If you don't dig it, that's A-OK. Also, I just recorded this whole thing, and my computer lost the file. So I'm going to try to keep the energy up, and I'm going to try to blaze through all this stuff because I talked way too long the last time around. So let's just get to it. This is some of my favorite music that I listened to in 2021. Very little of it was actually released during the year. Just stuff that I came across and really enjoyed most of it for the first time. Let's go. Okay, the Going Under original soundtrack from Feasley. I'm not familiar with this guy. I assume he's a producer and does beats and things like that because that's what this is. It's basically a beat tape and there's a risk these days of, of making beats that sound incredibly typical, especially on the professional level. Like so much of it can sound very homogenized and kind of dull, at least in my eyes. But this stuff really does have some excellent character. Although it's difficult to judge film or game music independently of the film or the game, I'm going to still try to claim that this music stands up entirely on its own. It's it's really easy to listen to when you're working or driving or anything. It's not that you're ignoring the music in the background, but it complements <laughs> these activities so incredibly well that I have it on very frequently. One thing it kind of reminded me of is a record or a, an album, rather, that you can only find on Bandcamp, as far as I know, or cassette set tape. It's called Gloom Bap from an artist called Hooded Menace that's uh, distributed via Dig Dug DIY. If you don't know about this stuff, check out his band camp. It's incredible. <laughs> Some really fantastic independent work. But whereas that album is very like lo-fi, very sample heavy, this just has a similar tone but with pristine production, beautiful mixing and mastering. And yeah, I mean, obviously it complements the game very well, but since we're not talking about the game right now, works great on its own. There's a, a collaboration or a feature from Chong the Nomad, who I'm also a big fan of. And something that's great about this one is that in the game, you have these musical themes for each of the dungeons. And then later on in the game, when the, the dungeons sort of evolve, the music evolves as well and becomes like more aggressive and intense. And most of the tracks on the album that I really appreciate and that I keep going going back to are the more aggressive things, the more dense and, and long drawn out tracks. Beautiful moments, certainly worth your time. I'm going to mention just highlights from each of the albums that I'm going to be talking about here in case you want to listen to them. Maybe I'll make a playlist on Spotify or something. But anyway, Fish People is wonderful. It's cooler than all of us. <laughs> the Grounds is wonderful. Bittersweet Victory Music. That's the Chong the Nomad collaboration. Love is Free and Trust Fall is definitely one of the most aggressive songs on here. And for some reason, at least on Spotify, this soundtrack has like almost no listens. I don't know whether people just don't know it's there or what, but please, this is really excellent work and it deserves more attention. Next, it's a little EP. It's a pop punk EP called Juno Goes to the Big House from a group called Sorry Mom. I assume they're based on the East Coast. They're pretty darn new. They haven't released a full length as far as I know. They did a King Princess cover <laughs> earlier this year that's really fantastic. This is not a groundbreaking one in any sense. Pretty typical pop punk stuff, leaning more towards sort of true punk, quote unquote. The singer has one of the best cigarettes voices I've heard in a long time and yeah most of the songs are just really loud and confrontational there's also a sense of like self-awareness and anxiety happening particularly on the song awesome party dude which has these lyrics that like don't really make sense time gets sort of condensed but it's true to the tone of the song and and sort of what the speaker the character is going through at the moment awesome party dude and 2006 are my favorites on that one next up we have time the revelator from Gillian Welch this one's not new at all. Came out in 2001. Fantastic album title, by the way. You know you're getting into some serious stuff when you see that title. And in this one, yeah, I mean, it's it's country music. Gillian Welch, I think she's from New York, or she grew up in New York or something. You can definitely get the sense that she's just a very intelligent person, and she's bringing a lot to the work. She's applying some pretty fresh ideas to more traditional country and sort of bluegrass forms, and beautifully executed. They really leave a lot of the rough edges in the recordings, but I think that just enhances everything everything. It's definitely far deeper stuff than like your typical arena country music, which I tend to hate quite a bit. And it's hard to talk about this one without touching on the song, the closing song, I Dream a Highway, which I wrote down is a melancholy hypnosis and history lesson on the sadnesses of condensed Americana. Decent line. That's okay. I kind of like that. Anyway, it's a huge song. It's like 12 or 14 minutes long. And 
it's just this repetitive melody and you you do get hypnotized you just get lulled into it and it tells you all these stories it touches on all these elements of country music and it's wonderful and some of the other highlights on this one uh april the 14th part one and i think my first lover great songs very different feels to them but incredible work nonetheless next up is a group called dat politics and a record called wow twist i don't know if this is cool or uncool but i first heard one of their songs in an episode of hilda it was an episode in season two when they're trying to find all the tide mice and stuff yeah it was a french group i don't know if they're still active but really high energy like electro pop stuff some weird manipulated vocals and just incredible an incredible variety of sounds that they jam into this stuff i don't know i think i would say that it's like it's good solo dancing music for an underwhelming tuesday but it's hard to describe outside so i'll just i'll just let you check it out it's a lot of fun some of my highlights on this one are dizzy zip and roll okay now we have ok kaya and her album both this is probably one of the more popular or more famous uh, artists that I'm, I'm mentioning here i wasn't familiar with her i didn't know that she had a pretty big following already and it's really interesting because i think her music can kind of trick you like if you're not paying attention and all you hear is the just perfect vocals and really cozy production it could just sound like any other contemporary neo soul or sort of singer songwriter r&b stuff but it's a lot more than that and it's mostly well the production is really something special too but the lyrics are everything here she really goes to some interesting places she's not mincing words there's comedy in here as well in addition to just hitting on some very serious topics and also you just have your sort of typical love songs very romantic songs stuff like that it's night music some of my favorite times here dance like you and la meg la mig that song's not in english so i don't know how it's pronounced everhood it's the Everhood soundtrack. If you're not familiar with this game, it's an indie thing released, I think, earlier this year, or late last year, and in some of its surface level elements, people were really comparing it to Undertale. It's actually not very much like Undertale, ultimately, and at least in terms of the music, I prefer the soundtrack to Everhood a million times over compared to the Undertale music. I'm really not a fan of that soundtrack at all. This is really good. A huge amount of variety, like some of the other stuff on this list. You have some dance stuff, rock, almost sludge, and, and industrial as well as just like a tonal fuckery in the mix too. Overall, relatively experimental. Like you need to be ready to hear some weird stuff. Although you can also just pull some of your favorite tracks that are a bit more accessible and go from there. So my highlights, Tinnitus Dance, Heavy, and You Want Gnomes. Next, we have Earl Sweatshirts, I Don't Like Shit, I Don't Go Outside, which is a few years old at this point. And I don't think it was received especially well when it was initially released. I think it mostly got just like generally positive ratings and all that kind of thing. I really like like it and in fact the way that i ended up listening to this album seriously and really paying attention to it is that years ago i had seen the title and i think it's a fantastic title it's like an iconic title to me and that phrase just popped up in my head at random one day and i was like oh what is that from oh yeah it's a record i should i should listen to it and i'm really glad i did i i love the incessantly dour tone here i would call this like indoor music you have the lights off and everything and i think now at this point i've been like a full-on Earl fan already. I know I'm late on that front. Okay, he, this is some serious work. My highlights, mantra, grief is wonderful. Here's one of the reasons why grief is wonderful. So in a lot of contemporary hip-hop stuff, just listen for sprinkler hi-hats. It's like a sprinkler going off, but it's extremely common in music production now for hip hop, unless it's leaning more towards like R&B stuff. You can hear it everywhere. But I mention it here because Grief does have that sprinkler hi-hat sound, but whoever is a wonderful choice, they, they use like just these incredibly shitty drum machine samples. I don't know what machine they're from. I don't know if they, they like kind of bit crash the sounds a, a little bit or something, but they sound terrible and it's great because your attention goes right to them. And and it immediately helps the song stand out from a lot of a lot of other contemporary work where it's just the same hi-hat sound every single time and it gets so dull. <laughs> That's it for the records. Some one-off songs that I'll move through kind of quickly. Cheater from Pom Poco. I think the album has the same name. This group, I don't know, I'm kind of split on them because they really are just doing Deer Hoof. A good 20, 25 years after Deer Hoof was, was breaking new ground with their stuff, especially in terms of vocals and vocal delivery. But even, yeah, guitar stuff sometimes, it's very similar. I think they've acknowledged the influence, but even so, I'm not 
necessarily getting stuff from them that I wouldn't just get from Deerhoof, but <laughs> this song, which I think was the single, I assume it's the single from that record, really cool, has an excellent build, and in particular I wanted to point out a moment, I think it's a time code 310, so 3 minutes, 10 seconds, around there, the guitar is doing some really crazy stuff, and then just for a moment or two, the bass is just a touch sharp and it creates this incredible sense of tension between the two parts and you can hear them both in the mix very clearly i love it i love it <laughs> keep an eye out for that that little moment what else sorry from beyonce this is a interesting one but i only really listened to lemonade seriously for the first time this year went through it a bunch of times yeah I developed some kind of appreciation for all the interesting stuff that was happening there especially lyrically but in terms of production and instrumentation stuff here most of this track sorry is just not very good like it's very standard it's very bland to me sounds like a million other things out there but then towards the end when they hit that break and it sort of blows up and you just get the bare bones of the beat to carry it through to the end is so cool <laughs> it's so fucking hip <laughs> I just love it and that's why I've gone back to this song many many times this year there's a song called Depearing from Low this is from their brand new record Hey What Double Negative from Fears Back was kind of their resurgence they were big in the 90s doing some crazy stuff and they developed this new sound that it's really fantastic. It's just this incredible maximalism and the sound is as loud as it can be. Wall of sound almost, not in the traditional sense, but just really hits you hard. And when they hit, the, hit those moments where it just really swells, it's too much in the best way possible. This song from Yuta Orisaka, don't know what the English translation is, whatever, I'll put it in the playlist. It's like a big band thing. He doesn't usually do like big band jazzy stuff. He has a range of styles, but this one's fantastic. His vocal delivery is just the best. It drives everything along. It feels loose and fun. It's it's just a great listen. Windows is a song from Jack Wilkins. This is an old guitar jazz track from, I don't know, maybe the 60s or 70s. It's very long too. If you're not into this type of jazz, you might not be into this one either. I love it. It takes me on a journey. No vocals, so I can just kind of experience it on my own and, and sort of feel my own feelings about it. What else? This is a long song title, but it's The Message 3. Blood. See page 39, 179 and bye. This is from Sloss and Malone on his latest record. I really like Sloss and Malone. I think he's doing some excellent work. Just fantastic experimental hip-hop stuff. This song is definitely more accessible than a lot of his other tracks, but even so, it gives you a taste of the weirdness that he's putting into his work. I, I just love it. And then finally, the, the last one is You'd Be So Nice to Come Home To from Marissa Anderson and Tara Jane O'Neill. Marissa Anderson is an incredible guitarist who I only found somewhat recently. Really wonderful. I'm so impressed by people who can play guitar and, and sort of construct a narrative through it and, and weave different melodic lines through everything. Um, and develop them over time and have them run into each other. Oof, it's beautiful. And the, the vocals on here are so just honest and raw. And it really does hit you if you're in just the right mood. But I think that's about it. <laughs> I'm so tired now. That's two straight recordings and it took took a lot out of me. Hopefully I, I mentioned something that could be kind of interesting or that you want to check out. And obviously, feel free to share stuff that you're into in the comments. Blah, blah, blah. Check the description for a playlist that I maybe remembered to make. And that's all. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by.